All right, Buffalo, it is that time for the trade deadline, and I have cooked up some trades on video that I think could possibly go through. Now, I do have one big blockbuster that we will wait till trade deadline day to go make. Uh, but quickly, let me show you some of the moves that I was looking at that I have uh, just down here. Uh, so the first one being with Detroit, okay? Like I said, we needed a right-handed shot defenseman for that second or third pairing once Henry Okiharu comes back. So we look at Detroit, and they had some decent defensemen here. Eric Gustafson being one of them. But we're looking at, at, uh, at Pizchek right here, Mark Pizchek. He used to play in the Buffalo Sabres organization. So we were looking at him, and we were also looking at Robbie Fabry as a depth piece. Now, I know what you guys are thinking. We're bringing in almost 6 mil, 4 mil for Fabry. He's got a year left. Like, let's be real. We can definitely try to sign him back next year at cheaper, or we'll let him walk. Now, we can do uh, Pizchek and Fabry, and we would be giving up uh, one of our second-round picks, which would be ours, not Detroit's. Uh, we're going to keep Detroit, so we're getting rid of Buffalo's second round pick, and then we have too many players in the organization, so we would have to give up some roster player. Now, I was looking at the highest age, we were looking at Davies, and I believe it was Bjork. Now, do I think this would go through? I definitely, I don't know, it'd be close, so let's see if this would go through. It does not go through, so they're fine with what they're coughing up. Uh, okay, your offer... Uh, to us is filling needs we have but the value isn't where it needs to be so maybe we would get rid of Detroit's second round pick for this or we get rid of a second and maybe like a sixth and keep Detroit second so a second uh, a six Bjork and Davies for Pizchek and Robbie Fabry will this go through you know what let's see if we can get rid of a seventh instead of a six not that it really matters but let's see if we can do a second and a seventh Trade rejected. All right, let's try a six-round pick. See if that works out. I have a feeling this won't even go through. Let's see. Trade rejected. Okay, so uh, I thought that this would be a trade that could easily go through. There's no one that I'm really willing to give up on the block here. Maybe we can get rid of Petrie there, get rid of that second. Maybe this will go through now that they have a, a prospect that they're looking at. Davies, Bjork a second, and Petrie for Pizchek and Fabry. Trade rejected still. Okay, so let's go Petrie. Maybe let's try giving them their second round pick back. Get rid of Petrie. Get rid of our second. Uh, okay, so let's see if this goes through. Again, I don't think it will, but it's very close. Trade rejected still. Okay, so let's stick with our se with Buffalo second, Bjork. Uh, did not mean to do that again. We're probably pissing off the Detroit Red Wings GM, okay? Not ideal. So who else is matching their block that we could probably willing to give up? Uh, Jonas has a little bit of trade value. Uh, we don't have him signed. So let's see if this goes through. Jonas or Jonas, a second. Bjork Davies for Pizchek and Fabry. Trade rejected. All right. So we will move on from Detroit for the time being. Another trade I did have cooked up was with the Calgary Flames. All right. We were looking for someone depth. This guy could replace... Um, Craig Smith on that fourth line because that fourth line are crazy minuses. So it's Alex Nylander. We'd be giving up our seventh round pick of this year, which I am definitely fine with. We don't really need draft picks anymore. And then we are giving up a defenseman who probably won't crack this team anytime soon. Uh, Lackinson, where is he? He's somewhere down here just for the roster player. I think this is going to go through no problem. So 7th and Lackinson for Nylander, and that is done, all right? So we have Alex Nylander. We tried getting his brother Willie. It didn't work, but we have Alex Nylander, so that is good to see there. Uh, we have too many players up here, I believe. So who's on a two-way? Savoy, he. I don't want to get rid of Savoy. He. Other than that, everyone's... Okay, so it's just the AHL lines that we got to fix for some reason. Who's uh, Who needs to be fixed? Okay, so he was playing in the AHL for us, but that's okay. We don't have any... Okay, so we got to call up Nylander. Let's just put Murray in the spot for now. Uh, let's go to roster moves. Okay. We need to call up Nylander, so we got to bring down someone. We could probably bring down Bryson. No one claimed him, so that's good. And then we are going to call up Alex Nylander, who's on a two-way. We have him for two years as well, which is good. 
And then Craig Smith essentially is going to get replaced by Alex Nylander. And that uh, fourth line is looking a little bit spicier, okay? So that was one of the moves that we made that ended up going through, okay? Uh, the next one that we have going through is a blockbuster. I kind of want to get this trade with his check done because he's one of the defensemen we were looking at. So maybe we don't need Robbie Fabry in the grand scheme of things. So maybe just a Piz check um, and a second round pick here. Buffalo second round pick and Davies and maybe Bjork as well and maybe that goes through all right so let's sort by age again Davies 28 76 overall probably not going to use him Bjork's been in the system for a while that we haven't been using so maybe this goes through a second Davies and Bjork for Pizchek and that goes through so there is our defenseman that we needed uh big trade done with the Detroit Red Wings so now is Pizchek down here that is the question he is not okay so uh, let's go to edit the AHL lines. We got rid of two players that or at least one that was playing for this team. Okay, clearly two. We have no defensemen right now, which is a little bit of an issue. Who is scratched here? Okay, no, we're good with defensemen. Uh, we'll bring in Mar Marihala. Sure, Rooster Lineman will go up one. And then defensively, we have defensemen down here. So we'll put in Bryson. And then Murray shouldn't be playing there. We will put in... Uh, Samuelson okay so there you go AHL is sorted and we have one more trade in the books boys one more trade that will be interesting okay so I'm gonna show you guys it if you guys go look over at Chicago and if we go look at who's matching the block one of them is being Buffalo born boy Patrick Kane doesn't have much trade value 27 goals 28 assists he's a minus five Fits the offensive line one, power play one, and four-man power play one. Now, this is a no-brainer to me to bring in Patrick Kane, in my opinion. Now, you guys are probably wondering what happens once you bring him in. Well, Kubalik is going to move down to the second line, which I'm fine with. He's been doing great on the first line. He's going to have a 30-goal season. On that second line, I think he will do just as well. Tuck will move down to the third, okay? So... We're going to head to the trade deadline. I think Patrick Kane is the big boy move that we will be making and the last move that we will be making come the trade deadline. If he doesn't work out, there is another big name that we are looking at as well. All right, so we are playing the Winnipeg Jets last game before the trade deadline day, and we win that game 5-2, to two, all right? So trade deadline coming up right now, and we are a buyer. Uh, we'll probably say... Uh, uh, we're a buyer. We're making a big move. We are a buyer. So let's enter the trade deadline. Let's see the big names that are on the block, right? Tori Krug, Ivan Pro, Rob, Patrick Kane, Drew Doughty, Zuccarello, who was the other guy that we were looking at, Kevin Fiala, Vidic Vanacek, uh, Jeff Skinner, Beauvillier, Kempe. Okay, so the Chicago Blackhawks and Patrick Kane do entice me. The, uh, the Blackhawks are not doing too well. So obviously... We would have to get rid of our first round pick for this year. Um, I think it just makes sense, okay? And this can go through straight up. I don't know if this will go through. Quickly, we have a trade coming out of St. Louis. They are trading Justin Falk to the Ducks for two prospects. Interesting. Okay, so um, will this go through right away? I don't necessarily think so. We are going to try it, though. A first round pick for Patrick Kane, and it goes through. Okay. So Patrick Kane is coming home to Buffalo on behalf of the Chicago Blackhawks organization. I accept your trade offer. We will see you out on the ice. Oh, that is a huge deal for the uh, Buffalo Sabres. we got a trade coming out of uh, Los Angeles. Fiala is going over to Chicago. Interesting. So Chicago making big moves uh, this trade deadline. Uh, they are getting a first-round pick. They just got Kevin Fiala. Uh, they have Kopitar. So maybe that's why they needed to make that move. Maybe we helped them move some cap around getting rid of Patrick Kane. We definitely did as they brought in a younger Kevin Fiala, all right? So Patrick Kane is now a Buffalo Sabre. And the good thing about this is he was making 8 mil. He's declining, obviously. He's 36. We could probably sign him to a one- or two-year deal at half of that uh, salary. So I'm happy with that. And then I was looking over what we need to do for next year. Once next year comes, we probably need a good right-handed defenseman, which we will have the cap for. We don't have many players with expiring contracts. So in terms of Buffalo, I think we are done. I think we are done making the moves we wanted to make. Uh, we've strengthened our offense and we strengthen our uh, defense. All right, so we got a trade coming in here. Austin Lynn and uh, Lennon 
for a fifth and a sixth and David Krejci. I'm going to decline that. Thank you, though. Okay, so I think our the Buffalo Sabres are looking good, man. Uh, defense is looking way better after bringing uh, Pizchek in, 83 overall. He'll probably play uh, the first unit, and then when Yoki Haru comes back, he'll be playing that second unit. It's looking good, though, boys. It's looking good, all right? So we are done. I think essentially we are done. We have not much else that we want to do to this team. We have depth forwards. We have depth defensemen. Uh, Gavrikov and a fourth we're going to decline. But like I said, we have depth right now, okay? Like looking at this team right now, all right, what depth do we have? Like who is not starting on this team right now, okay? Engvall, uh, we got Robertson, Yoki Haru, we got Clay, Colton, um, we got Nylander, Savoyhi, Zub, Craig Smith, Jack Quinn, Halton, and if we need to bring him up, uh, Rooster Linen. Like we have depth, we have a starting team. I think we are done come the trade deadline. Um, and we're just going to go over trades. So the Ducks making another trade. They are getting Jakob Voracek from the Kraken for some draft picks. Interesting there. So essentially, if there are any big deals that happen through the trade deadline, I will let you guys know. We still have a lot of hours to go. So if there's any big blockbusters, I will cut back and uh, let you guys know. If not, we are probably done for the trade deadline. Quickly, uh, the Philadelphia Flyers want to get rid of Provorov. They want Ostalin and Subrev. Uh, we'd be getting a 5th, a 6th, and a 7th back. Okay, so Provorov. What is Provorov looking like? I'm okay. Ostalin, man, 20. He's a 72 overall. He's a, a top 6 forward potential for Provorov, who is 28, 89 overall, left-handed shot. We don't need any more left-handed shot defensemen. We have Owen Power. We have uh, um, Rasmus Dahlin. Uh, this is not a trade that... Not, not to say that it's a bad trade. It's not something that we need. Uh, Subrev, okay, so what, what, what's on our block right now? I'm not really willing to give up any of these guys, all right? So let's stop with these trades here. And uh, like I said, I'll get back to you guys if there's other any other trade offers or big blockbuster moves happening around the NHL. Trade alert here, Columbus is moving Beauvillier and Dumas to the Kraken for Yanni Gord. So the Kraken, uh, pretty active this trade deadline. I'm not too sure what they're trying to do. Another trade. This time coming out of Calgary, they're trading a third and a fifth and Matt Nieto to the Canucks in exchange for Lecker Mackey and Unger. Um, no really big names there. Kind of just some depth moves moving around there for Calgary. Trade alert coming out of Montreal. They are trading Jake Evans and a third round pick to Ottawa in exchange for V. Placanic, a seventh, and Hudobin. So they want to bring back someone with a last name Placanic, clearly. Detroit making a move here. They are trading Andrew Kopp, Robbie Fabry, who we were looking at, and a fourth round pick to St. Louis in exchange for a second, for two seconds. So Robbie Fabry. Did end up moving. He does not come home to Buffalo, but he's moving elsewhere. Arizona getting in on the action here. They are trading a second round pick, Boink, to San Jose for a uh, Coconut and Comper. So uh, Arizona getting a goalie and a depth piece, uh, probably a top nine forward there. Uh, not a bad trade for Arizona. The Avalanche are at 101 points already. Did I see that correctly? Oh my God. Stats Central. Let me, let me see if that's true. There's no way that's true. The trade coming in, we don't want David Krejci. You offered me that already. Stats Central. Can we check standings here? We can. Okay, okay, okay. Let me see this real quick. Yeah, the Colorado Avalanche have 101 points. 49 wins already at the trade deadline. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. What What is Colorado dealing with? we got a trade incoming. Uh, the Jackets are trading a second and a fourth to Detroit in exchange for Jonathan Marshall. Interesting. Okay. What what is what what is happening here? What what is the uh, what is what? Who do the Avalanche have here? McKinnon, Lannisco, Granton, and Bertuzzi, Newhook, Byram, Nachuskin, Gerard, McCard, Trennan, Kerfoot. Yeah, they got a good team, man. They got a good team. Makes sense why they have 101 points already. The trade deadline has come and gone. No other big major moves uh, that I was able to see. Okay, so. Let's go edit these lines real quick. All right, so we tried sending down Jack Quinn to the minors, and he got claimed off of waivers to Seattle. So not ideal. We're losing a player, but we, we needed to call up Alex Nylander. We traded for him for a reason. So uh, we lose one of our depth forwards, unfortunately. It is what it is, all right? So let me go back and edit these lines. So this is what the team is looking like after the trade deadline, all right? So we have a first line of Victor Olofsson, Tage Thompson, and Patrick 
Kane, man. Uh, that is a huge first line to have. Kubalik is now into the second line. He will be playing alongside Dylan Cousins and Nino Onita Ryder. The third line is now looking like Asplund, Middlestad, and Alex Tuck. And the fourth line of Alex and Nylander, Matthew Savoy, he, and Pierre Engvall. Defense, we got Darlene playing with a newly acquired Mark Pizchak. We got Owen Power playing with Ilya Labushkin and then Robertson and Clegg. All right. Goaltending stays the same with UPL and Elliott. And then scratch right now, we got Artem Zub. Ross Colton, Craig Smith, Yoki Haru is injured, and Peyton Krebs is injured as well. So once Peyton Krebs comes in, essentially we're going to have to see who's going to be coming out of this lineup. I'm, I'm not too sure who it's going to be. I'm liking the way this team is looking. Uh, it's going to be interesting uh, to make that call. Obviously, once Henry Yoki Haru is back, uh, Clegg is probably going to get the boot as he's a left-handed shot playing the right side right now, and this line's a minus two. Okay, so everything is looking good here in Buffalo. We made some big moves. And it is time to continue the sim and see uh, who our playoff matchup is going to be if we can hold our playoff spot. So let's sim the rest of this month here. See how this team does with the newly acquired players. It's a 2-1 win uh, in uh, the trade deadline day win. Uh, Valamaki, interesting. Uh, let's see. 80 overall, left-handed shot defenseman. Uh, not something that we really need. We're going to decline that uh, waiver option there. Okay, so... Uh, Picard is able to play just hit continue Chicago uh, Patrick Kane playing his uh, former team we win against some old powers injured until March 23rd so that's a huge defenseman gone for us again he's uh, had the injury bug for a while there uh, Artem Zub is going to come in so this kind of works out there Clegg and Zub Robertson Labushkin Darlene Pizchak power play we're missing someone on the second line here that got auto filled and we're good to go okay uh, hit continue there Owen Power is ready to play We'll give him the week just to be safe. Uh, let's hit stop simming. Uh, we'll go up to the Nashville day, and then we will bring in Owen Power. All right, so go to uh, go to roster moves. It's saying we got to send someone down because uh, we have too many players, which we actually do. Nylander's down to a 79. We're going to send him down. He's on a, the only one on the two-way. Uh, so let's edit the NHL lines. He went down to a 79. So obviously not having a fun time on that line there. Defensively, Zub is going to be coming out here. Uh, Robertson over there. Zub over there. And then, obviously, Owen Power back into the lineup with this team. Um, was there someone else that's ready to go? I think there actually is. Uh, Peyton Krebs is back into the lineup. So, he made that decision easy for us. Uh, we need one of these centers to play the wing. Um, and I'm not sure who it's going to be uh, because Dylan Cousins is the only winger. Kubalik's up to an 85, by the way, so he's liking the second line. Kane went down in overall, unfortunately. Um, I'm not sure where to put in um, Peyton Krebs here. Can he play the wing? I don't think he can. He can. He's a center slash left winger. Uh, so we could put someone who plays right wing, left wing. So maybe put Nita Ryder down here and maybe put... Um, Peyton Krebs there, and who has the better face-off ratings when it comes to that? Uh, 78, 78, they both got the same. I think we're going to go with something like this. Maybe, no, let's let's stick with this, all right? So now the lines are different. We got Krebs, Cousins, and Kubalik. If it doesn't work out, we can always throw Niederreiter back onto this line uh, and see what it does. I, I kind of want to keep Niederreiter there just because have uh, someone up there with age. Maybe throw Krebs where Asplin is. Uh, but then we're demoting him to the third line. It's not like he had a... Okay, you know what? We'll keep it like that for now. Asplund's going to have to play uh, where he is for now. Two left-handed shots on that line, all right? So let's see how that does. And we will continue simming here, all right? A couple weeks left in this month. Let's see how the Sabres hold up. Uh, Rooster Lion is hurt, so we'll replace him down there in the minors. Uh, let's continue to win some games here. We're one win off of a 41 season here. Well, we get it. We will. So we are 40, 29, and 5 with a couple weeks left. We're sitting in third, looking to clinch that spot. 85 points. We are The Senators are a point behind us, and then there's a Lightning that probably will not be catching us. All right? So looking decent here, looking at the lines and everything. Uh, Kubalik still at an 85. Kane went up an overall. Krebs is still at an 85. So the lines seem to be working here defensively. Uh, Pizchak, man, went down to an 80 overall. Uh, we really need 
to get our man Yoki Haru back. Uh, Elliot was hurt apparently. 9-11, 9-11 from both goaltenders. It is what it is. How is our boy um, Halton and doing? 79 overall. He's having himself a good year there. 14 goals, 18 assists. All right, so not bad. Switch back to the NHL. Uh, we got a week or a couple weeks left of hockey until the playoffs. Let's see what these uh, what these Sabres can do. Let's see if we can clinch a spot here. We'll go a game at a time. All right, Washington, uh, Prostev will do that. 4-2 uh, loss, not ideal. Boston here. Uh, Pro steps back shirt three to win. We have yet to clinch. The Senators are still a point behind us, which makes this game very, very interesting. All right, so uh, if we win this game, we have a chance to go up uh, three points uh, against the Senators. So this is a big game that we are going to watch, and hopefully uh, the Sabers can come out with a win here. All right, so let's see what our Buffalo Sabers can do. This is a big game that we want to hold the third spot. Uh, Adam Henrik will get the first goal of the game, but Asplund, 32 seconds later, ties it up. The Senators now have Marc-Andre Fleury, so that is interesting. Power play for the Sabres, nothing going there. Another power play for the Sabres, still nothing. So our power play maybe needs some work done. We're not too sure there. End of one, it is a one-to-one -one hockey game. Heading into the second, it's a close game and a very important game for both teams. Brady Kachuk getting a power play goal. It's a 2-1 hockey game. Uh, power play, Sabres, they score a Kubalik. The rookie getting a power play goal. Power play for the Sens. We kill it off. We're giving up a lot of penalties, which I'm not a fan of seeing. Jake Evans makes it a 3-2 hockey game. We have yet to hold the lead in this hockey game. But Savoy, he, the fourth liner, uh, ties the game right back up three minutes later. We are heading into the third with an even hockey game. 3-3, 21 shots apiece. Who will be the hero for either team to help uh, a team get caught up? And Casey Middlestat scores. We get our first lead of this hockey game let's see if the buffalo sabers can hold on and gain a three-point lead up on the ottawa senators in a very tight uh race for that third spot in the atlantic division dylan cousins makes it five to three and the buffalo sabers win this game after pure angle scores an empty netter six to three hockey game a big two points for the buffalo sabers as we will take a extended lead now over the uh, Ottawa Senators, all right? We got a game coming up against Columbus. It's a 5-4 to four loss. Senators are now two points behind us. A uh, game against Montreal. Victor Olofsson is hurt until May 5th. Oof, man, this is not the time to be getting injuries. So pretty much everyone's going to go up a line here. And we are going to bring in probably Craig Smith. Uh, or, or one of these guys, a uh, left-handed shot. Yeah, so we'll bring in Ross Colton. Uh, even though he does not play the wing. Asplund can go there, actually. And instead of bringing Colton in, we'll bring in Craig Smith. So there we go. That kind of works out there, right? Uh, everything looks good there. Power play. Saying that we're missing people. We actually are. Uh, so Victor Olofsson was hurt. The game is glitched once more. Love when this happens. Uh, here we will bring in... Uh, like, I don't know who's not getting used. Maybe we'll put in Patrick Kane uh, into that second line. Um, and then the four, or you know what? He's probably on the first line. Yeah, we don't want to double shift him. We got Owen Powers, Rasmus Dahlin up there. He is. So anyone but Patrick Kane here, pretty much. Uh, right winger, maybe out of Alex Tuck would work. It looks good to me. Oh, no. Alex Tuck's already playing there. And the game, again, is once again glitched. Like, I, this game is so annoying. All right, so Alex Tuck, let's just throw in pure angle for the time being. And uh, we'll worry about it then. All right, so we made changes. I, like I said, I like Niederreiter on this line with Cousins and Kubelik just because they're so young. This way you have someone who's 32 to help a 24-year-old and an 18-year-old. So Krebs is up with Thompson and Kane. Uh, Kubelik, man, three goals off of having a 40-goal season in his rookie year. I think it might be safe to say he's going to win the Calder Memorial Trophy. I forgot the, the name of the trophy for some reason. Anyways, lines are good. For the time being, all right? So 3-1 win. Uh, we have clinched a playoff spot. The Buffalo Sabres have done it. Uh, we have an X next to our name. 91 points uh, on the season with a 43-win season. We have a chance to get a 46-win season, I believe. So let's just sim the last three games of the season. See what we can do here. It's a 7-4 win. It's a 3-1 win. It's a 4-3 loss. So a 45-32-5 season after uh, tanking the year prior, we finished the year with 95 points 
um, which is pretty nice to see. Kane finishing with 77 points. So looking at all the team leaders uh, right now because I'm interested to see. Uh, Patrick Kane with a 77-point season. Cousins with 61. Kubalik with 53. He was three off of getting a 40-goal season with this team, but he did lead this team with goals, which was very nice to see, okay? Goaltending-wise now, um, UPL ends off the season with a 9-11 save percentage, had 37 wins, 23 losses, 5 OT losses, and 3 shutouts, which is pretty nice to see. Now, looking for the entire NHL here just to see where everyone finished off pretty much uh the entire league all right so who uh, led wins as a goalie samsonov with 46 upl had 37 tied with hellbuck so he finished i think top 10 one two three four five six so he finished tied in sixth place probably ahead of hellbuck because he had one less game played looking at save percentages Obviously, he's not up there. Same with goals against. I don't think he's up there at all, but he is up there for wins, which is nice to see, okay? Now, looking at all skaters here. Who led the league in goals? Austin Matthews with a 51-goal season. McKinnon with 50. Uh, Ovi with 46. Connor with 44. Uh, so, uh, our rookie up there with 37. Tied with Sidney Crosby, which is actually insane. Uh, looking at points. Point leader, Johnny Goudreau with 109, McKinnon with 105, 97 for Line A. Any Buffalo Sabres up here? Uh, not that I see anywhere close. Looking at assists, who led with assists? Uh, Landeskog with 70, Goudreau with 66. Again, any Sabres up here? Not that I see, okay? Uh, so that is all the individual uh, stats, or, uh, stats there. Looking at uh, the entire league here, all right? The Colorado Avalanche had a 61 season. Uh, we ended up in, where are the Sabres? Hello, Buffalo. Did we pass ourselves? We had to have passed ourselves here. The Buffalo Sabres finished in 10th in the whole entire NHL, a point behind the Stars, uh, which is pretty cool to see. We did pretty well. Okay, now looking at power play percentages, where did we rank? Uh, just in the Atlantic. I'm interested to see where we uh, we ended off in the Atlantic with our power play. Per or that's our point percentage. Our goals for uh, percentage. We finished in... Ooh. Uh, okay, so not great. Uh, that's for sure. Oh, wait, no. That is very good. We finished pretty good uh, in third for goals for. Uh, goals against uh, average here. We finished in third, so not too bad. Uh, power play goals, power play percentage. Uh, doo -doo -doo. We are don't have a great power play to say the least there. Okay, uh, and our penalty kill is third. So our power play needs to get better uh, come playoff time, clearly, and we will figure that out then. All right, so let's uh, see who our first round opponent is going to be, and we are playing the Florida. Panthers in round one of the Stanley Cup playoffs. Oh, brother. The uh, the Panthers had a good season, 50, 28, and 4. Next video, the Buffalo Sabres will be competing in the NHL playoffs for the first time since GM Leifer has taken over.